we're ready to get started. Um, hi, uh, welcome everyone. I'm Stephanie Hartwig, um, your host for today's um, presentation. Thank you for joining us for um, social media marketing like a pro. Um, we have a number of people joining us um, today. And um, so I think this topic is um, very relevant to everyone. So it's, it's exciting to have um, Zach Mason here. Um, he is the sales and marketing director with Chicago Title and uh, received his social media marketing certification um, from F Fidelity National Financial. And um, Zach is also a sought after um, speaker on social media strategies and tactics. Um, and so we're pleased to have him presenting um, on this topic today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Zach. Great. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is a pretty fantastic Zoom turnout for 12 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon, especially in an age where we're all regularly dealing with uh, Zoom burnouts. So hopefully I'm able to really uh, maximize your time here, the value in it, and give you some great social media information. So we're going to jump right in and kind of what I'm going to do today, just a little bit of an overview for you, is I'm going to go over um, first some trends that we've seen come out of 2021, kind of the era of COVID as it were, and, and we're seeing progress into 20, uh, or excuse me, 2020 and into 2021. Uh, we'll address some of those trends and then we'll go over some like kind of tips and tricks for you to navigate um, your social media marketing and PR and all that good stuff. So we're going to dive straight in. I'm going to share my screen here. Cool. So we're going to jump right in. And the first thing we're going to address is going to be uh, branding and building your own brand and the importance of that and uh, how that kind of relates to everything else we're going to talk about today. If you don't have this down, uh, then there's really not a lot that's gonna benefit you in the rest of the talk today. It's really important, especially in the digital world, you can't meet somebody face to face. You can't get that, you know, that vibe, that energy, that charisma. You can't hear the inflections in their voice. So being able to represent yourself, you know, quickly, concisely uh, is, is a big deal. So we'll start with the why. And if you, maybe some of you have done this before, maybe you haven't. Yeah, if it's been a while since you've done it, maybe the last time you did it was pre-COVID, it might be helpful to do a little audit and go do it again. Uh, but we're going to jump right into that. So define your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? And why are you doing it now? So not only what are your core reasons for doing the thing you're doing. I know there's, there's a lot of people in this group, so you know it's hard to pick a, a specific category and roll with it. But you know, if you're in restaurants, what is the why that got you into it? If you're in you know, uh, sales for a company that has a, a service, say for online you know, uh, website management, like what is the reason you're doing that career? What is the reason your business is in play? Uh, defining that why you're doing it, right? Is it because you care about this? And if you do care about it, what's the specific thing you care about it? And why does it matter right now? And, you know, in the kind of era we're moving into, the digital world is really taking over. We're seeing huge rises still, even as COVID sort of starts to fade, we're seeing these huge rises, rises still in people going online with everything, you know, switching shopping online, switching their therapy, and, and they did telehealth appointments online. And now, you know, uh, as in-person returns, a pretty fair amount of people are still stick, sticking with doing telehealth appointments. So we are seeing that happen. And, and, you know, that could relate to why you're doing what you're doing right now. Uh, defining how you are going to do it. Like I said, this is the real basic stuff. If you've read Simon Sinek, Start With Why, you're already all over all of this. But defining how you're going to do the thing you care about. Like, you know, how is it going to happen? Are you going to do it in person? Are you going to be an online service? Are you going to, uh, you know, have a team that implements it for you and you're just the visionary? What's the how behind how you're going to get to it? Defining the what. So, you know, coming up with that clear, clear, short explanation of what your product or service is. A lot of times you meet with people and you ask them what they do and it starts to develop into this whole spiel and conversation. And of course, we want to try and stay away from that and have something that's catchy and short and gives a great definition of, of what it is that you do or what it is that you offer. 
You'll see some more examples of that as we move forward. And then finally, and this is gonna be the big theme for today, to find who you are and who you are here for. So defining you yourself as an individual in relationship to all of this and defining the people that you're here to help or that you're here to solve a problem for. And uh, I mean, the why is so important, but today we're gonna focus a lot on the who because that's what you're gonna find is important and trending in social media right now. So a quick little view of your digital brand or your digital self. We wanna identify and refine and so we can communicate clearly who our digital self or our digital brand is. So first we're gonna to try to do this and, and I know that there's recording being made so those of you who want it can uh, access it after we're done. You're also free to take screenshots if you want but we're gonna go through some of these exercises here. So first identify five to 10 words that mean the most to your brand or yourself in order of importance. Actually, this is a cool exercise just to do for yourself as a human being even. Uh, but you know, go through what are words that really mean something to you? that means something to your brand or yourself, uh, you know, as a person and get those words down, just a list of five will do 10 if you can pull it off and then label those in order of importance, you know, prioritize what's the word that means the most to you and then work down the list from there. Next, you're gonna go and you're gonna select five to 10 emojis and you're gonna try, your phone will start auto-populating these as you use them, uh, but you're gonna select five to 10 emojis that fit well with your brand. We're just gonna use the word brand from now on. And brand, we're gonna use it synonymously with self because if you're sitting here in this, you know, you have your personal social medias and that's all well and good, but you're probably not here today to learn how to communicate better with your friends and family on social. Hopefully you're here to learn the, the marketing side of it. So uh, we're gonna stick with that part and say five to 10 emojis that fit well with your brand. So say, you know, the thumbs up emoji, the target emoji, uh, check emoji, those sorts of things. You're going to set those, select them, start to cycle through those and use them so they start to auto populate inside your uh, mm -hmm. options. This one is a nuanced one. We're going to talk more about this as we move forward, but we're going to go ahead and address this for now. Select three Instagram filters that you like and then kind of just use those. If you're familiar with Instagram, you'll know that you can hold the filter and slide it forward to the, to, to the beginning of the filter options and kind of have those be your, you know, your first three filters that populate when you open filters. Select a color palette. So what this is a reference to is when we have several different sites, which most of us who are in business or, or marketing or brand you know, development have several sites. You have a web page, you have a Facebook, you have an Instagram, you might have a LinkedIn, so on and so forth. So you're gonna to wanna to try to keep the colors moving very uh, fluidly through them. There's some psychology behind, people don't like being taken to a different place when they click on something. So if they're moving between your Facebook to your Instagram and so on and so forth, you want that experience to have kind of a fluid feel for them. So uh, having a color palette selected can be very helpful. It can also help in like having a nice curated Instagram feed, like I said, we're gonna discuss that portion and the filter portion a little more in depth as we get going here. All right, this is a big one. A lot of people that I work with, I work with uh, clients three to five, usually a day. And uh, in the course of our working together for about a month, this will come up. And I very rarely run across people who've ever done this. So I'm gonna encourage you all to do this. And I'm gonna show you an example on one of the slides coming up, but write up a very short UVP which means unique value proposition. I would encourage you to keep it at one single sentence. If you need to, that's okay. If you have to go three, maybe, but you're really pushing it. And I'll show you an example of what a UVP is on this next slide here so that uh, you can you know, kind of get a visualization of it for yourself. And then this is the big one we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about today. Identify where you can be real. And, and you can connect. And this is what we're seeing as kind of, you're gonna see this as a theme throughout our talk today. So over 2020, what happened? People were left, you know, kind of having to stay home in most cases in most states. Their social lives really, uh, you know, either were non-existent or were refined maybe to a small group of, you know, five, uh, 10 close friends and family. And everything else in the social world took place 
via the digital medium. And so what we discovered is that people over the course of the year started responding better and better and better to uh, posts and interactions and visuals that you know, they perceived as being real, as being raw, authentic. So finding a space, identifying it, like where is a place inside of your brand where you can get real with people, you know? And like I said, there's probably so many different fields in here today, it's hard to pick one, but if you're in, uh, you know, the medical field, can you get real and talk about, you know, hard stories from your own life that made you passionate about the job you're in or struggles you've had and how you've overcome them? Uh, if you're in, you know, uh, say, well, like I said, there's too many to think of, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, you want to find something inside of your set career where there is a call to vulnerability that you can answer and people respond really well to that. Or there's even, even if you don't want to go the vulnerable, vulnerable route, even just being able to really be funny, uh, to be lighthearted and show people the kind of non-curated version of your work and what you do. So, now that we've gotten that identity piece, we're going to start focusing on trends and where 2021 is headed. We're going to start with Instagram. So this is what I'm going to call Instagram 101, the basics of a good profile, good feed, and understanding the importance of engagement. And we're going to get to that UVP inside of this, as well as those uh, things we talked about earlier with the color palettes and all that. Okay, so first impression is going to be your profile. So what uh, we're going to show you kind of how to set up a good profile here. And I'm going to open the chat box. I realized I haven't done that. Let me open that. There we go. Cool. Now I can see if you ask me questions. Okay. So your profile, your username, you're going to make that your name or your brand name. So as you can see right up here on the slide, we've got Chelsea Pites and we have Mr. Jerry Porter. So that's their name. And that's what we're using is the uh, username is the name. If you have to put a dot in or a space or, you know, something of that nature, that's okay. Uh, but we're wanna, we want to use that as the name. And then if at all possible, we want to try to find a name that we can in turn make, you know, the name on our Facebook or very similar as well so that people don't have issues finding us when using our, you know, username between sites. Obviously, there is some slight variance, but try to keep it, uh, you know, for example, if she had changed this to Pites Chelsea and then her Facebook uh, handle was Chelsea Pites, she might just want to switch it around on Facebook as well. Now, the spot where your name uh, would be on your profile, I'm going to encourage you to experiment with trying uh, change that. Change it to keywords, uh, you know, bullet points, emojis, things like that, things that are easy to read. But you can see here. Uh, Jerry has social media coach. Chelsea has camera first social media. So these are two searchable categories, your username and your name spot. They're the only two search searchable categories as far as uh, accounts go. You know, obviously there's hashtags for uh, searching for tags, but as far as searching accounts, these are your two options as far as being able to be found in searches. So I would encourage you to consider uh, doing that and maybe changing your name to something a little different that has more of a keyword feel to it. Okay, UVP, one to two sentences like we talked about. You're going to see here that on this, uh, this portion for the UVP, it says, I help turn social activities into business outcomes. So that's her UVP. Jerry didn't do a UVP on his, but that's okay. He did some nice emojis down, kind of giving a little overview of, um, of everything on there. And just real quick, uh, let me check in. I can see you, Lena, and I know you. So can you see all these points right here? Is everything showing up okay? Great, thank you. Okay, so your UVP, that's what you're gonna wanna do. And, and really, it's exactly what it sounds like. Unique value proposition. What is unique that you have to offer? What's the value of it? And how are you proposing it? So in Chelsea Pites' case, her job, she actually works with my company and she's my uh, social media coach that I do regular meetings with. And her job, her whole job is working with uh, real estate agents primarily, but uh, anybody who's looking to develop their Instagram and helping them turn their social activities on Facebook and you know, turn them into business outcomes. That was a real brilliant way of putting that. She could have said, I'm a social media marketer. 
I'm a social media expert who specializes in, you know, pictures. But she didn't say that. She came up with this nice kind of catchy one liner that she could use anywhere, anytime and explains right away what she does. So you might have to take some time with that one and experiment, but it's absolutely worth getting down. All right, next option down here, you're going to see they both have it. They have links. So in Chelsea's case, she has a link to Amazon where you can buy her book on social media. In Jerry's case, he has a link tree link, which takes out to a site where he can have a landing page that has like a podcast, a vlog, a website, a product, like multiple links inside of that link. And it keeps them kind of inside of Instagram. The link tree link looks the same, feels the same. So it has that nice synergy. But if you have a website or you have a landing place that people can go, I encourage you to use that link thing. You can always use photos and say, you know, link in bio and send people up there to, you know, get more information about a cool product you have or a, a website you want to link out to. And then you'll see down here, both of them have a nice uh, set of highlights. Those highlights are super handy. They're the first thing our eyes hit before they hit the feed. And I can identify, you know, social tips right there on Chelsea's. So if that's what I'm here for, I can go thumb through all of her social tips. Okay, and then you'll wanna change your Instagram. If you're a brand, you'll wanna make sure that it's either a creator account or a business account. I personally kind of prefer the creator account. I don't think it makes a huge difference, um, but you can see analytics either way. You can run ads either way. So I kind of lean towards the creator for myself, uh, but you do want it to be one of those two. If this is something that you're doing that has any sort of marketing value or that has any sort of brand involvement, because this is going to allow you to see analytics. And that's really what we want to get to. We want to see who is engaging with your stories and all that good stuff. Okay. So this is a page that I'm calling the Insta Makeover page. And, and like I said, we're going to address the color schemes and all that now. But first, I want you to think about it this way. So I'm going to show, I'm showing you here on the far right. These two are my wife. My wife is a therapist who runs her own practice. And so what we did with my wife is we looked up other therapists. We literally did hashtag therapist, hashtag therapy, and started looking for other therapists. And what we found was just like this, we found an influencer that would be called a, um, a micro influencer. A micro influencer is someone who has under a hundred thousand followers, uh, but is still an influencer. We found one that in that category and one of the more macro with 390,000. And we looked at uh, several people's pages, but these are just two examples and saw what are these people doing that have these huge followings in our field. And so once we identified that, we took our own page and started trying to sort of copy a little bit more of that kind of a format and feel. And there's nothing wrong with this first one. But as you can see, just that simple little change, we went from 427 uh, all the way up to uh, almost 700 on within like two weeks, just off of that little change. So what I said before about the colors, this is what I wanted to address right now. We are seeing a trend uh, that is moving towards like not over curating things, not over polishing things. So the goal is not to have this like flawlessly coordinated feed. That's not, it's still helpful, but it's not necessary. If you can get a degree of a theme going, and then, you know, you can feel totally comfortable to intersperse things that are unconnected as long as they're, you know, authentic uh, content. Um, so don't feel like you're bound to this thing where you have to spend all of this time constantly trying to make sure your theme is perfectly synced up. Just try to have a little bit of a general theme going. It kind of helps eyes follow the feed. If it's too many colors, too much going on, the feed starts looking too busy and it can be difficult for people to scroll down and find what they're looking for. But you don't have to overdo it, especially right now as there's this trend kind of moving away towards enjoying more, um, you know, authentic content. But just those little changes can really help generate some uh, interest around you. All right. Okay, how to hashtag. So a lot of people, and I am one of them when I started using social media, really don't understand hashtags and how to get the most out of them. So this is just going to be a little step-by-step -step for you that walks us through how to use hashtags 
properly and how to get your kind of your money's worth out of them. So on the far hand side here, you'll see an example where it shows one to two in the million, three to five in the 100,000, three to five in the 10,000, and one to two in the 1,000. That's not an exact formula. You don't have to follow that precisely, but we would encourage you to kind of look, look at this as a guide when you're building your hashtag sets of how to figure out what hashtags are actually gonna get you interaction. Because a hashtag in and of itself doesn't necessarily do anything for you. For example, if you type in love, hashtag love, you're gonna see something in the nature probably of who knows, 500 million hashtags, right? So what you have to think about is if you use that, you are going to be within a matter of a few seconds drowned out by the 5,000 other hashtags that had love that popped up. You're not going to show on people's feeds when they're looking at things hashtag love, right? So that's too much. That's too big. It's fine if you use it because you want to use it. But what we're looking for when we're trying to develop that interaction from people is hashtags that are more, uh, you know, they're not going to get drowned out as fast. So that's why we say we recommend like keeping it in that category of a few, just a handful in the millions, three to five in the hundred thousands or somewhere in that range, uh, three to five in the 10,000. And that one to two is like the 1000 area. That's like more specialized things. Like for example, if I was to do hashtag Pasco law, right? There's not going to be millions of hits on that. It's going to be just a couple thousand most likely. And you can always use your specialized hashtags too and use it for yourself and your brand. So like, for example, a hashtag that has no followers, but uh, you want to create for myself, uh, I was a co-owner in the Bradley. So we did hashtag at the Bradley. Um, and uh, that was a specialized hashtag, but it's helpful because over time we can use one of the three like personal branded hashtags we've developed and I can pull up posts that have that hashtag on them. Like maybe, for example, if we tell everyone, you know, use hashtag at the Bradley and you get this discount or this special, then I can use that hashtag as the owner go back and see through who's participated in that. So I had a question come in here and it says, are these the same numbers for LinkedIn too? Um, and I would say definitely not. Um, LinkedIn's a lot different than Instagram. So LinkedIn's actually going through some growing pains right now, um, just due to, and we'll kind of, we'll kind of cover some of that. Um, I was privy to a meeting that happened at LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago, and they're really trying to define how they're going to move forward in our video driven content age. Um, and LinkedIn stories are really not doing very well right now. Um, so as far as hashtags go in LinkedIn, I mean, really, you don't have to follow this. Just use the hashtag that means something to you. There's not nearly the volume of usage happening. Okay, so a little structure for you on hashtags. I would identify a minimum of 40 hashtags that work for your brand. Do a little bit of research on this. Take a day. This is going to save you so much time in the future, and this is why I'm sharing this with you. I am a busy person. I have a lot on my plate. I have a couple different businesses I'm involved with. I'm full-time over here at Chicago Title. I do little speaking engagements. I've got kids, you know, the whole nine yards. So I've had to learn a lot of these tricks in order to stay relevant. Um, so what you're going to do, do a little research, find about 40 hashtags that work for your brand. Try to make sure none of them are in this oversaturated realm, you know, 10 million plus kind of thing. Once you've identified those 40 hashtags, what we're going to do is we're going to create what I'm calling blocks. So hashtag blocks. I do four to five of them. And each block, I'd have 10 to 20 hashtags in that block. You can copy these, put these in uh, notes on your phone, put them in a Word doc on your computer, but have those four to five different hashtag blocks set aside. You can do... The, the recommendation is to do between 15 hashtags and 30 hashtags per post. Not really any more than that. And, uh, you know, you don't have to treat it like an exact science. If you've got eight hashtags and they're great or even four, that's okay. But if you're looking for maximum, you know, engagement, getting in more in that, you know, 10 to 20 range is probably better on the hashtags. So the hashtag blocks, you're going to create these and you're going to copy them and put them in your phone, four separate ones or five separate ones. Okay, layer hashtags as seen in the illustration. So 
You're going to want to make these hashtag blocks a little bit of a mix of these different hashtags. You can follow an easy way to do hashtag research is to follow hashtags related to your brand and then see what people are, are using. So for example, if I'm a real estate agent, I could follow hashtag real estate, click on you know a post that has tons of interactions and then see what hashtags they used and then source from their hashtag list for my hashtags. Uh, same with foodie or wine. I could go in there. I'm just looking for popular posts or people that have large followings. And then you create these hashtag blocks. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use those moving forward with your posts so that you don't have to spend all this time on each post trying to be clever and come up with all these hashtags and doing this research on every little thing. Yeah, okay, so someone said, please explain lay layering hashtags again. Yeah, no problem. So once we've identified these, like say 40 hashtags we've got, okay? And you might even wanna do more than that, whatever works for you. But in that, we're gonna identify say, you know, 10 of these are high follower hashtags. They're, they have in the millions of, of hashtags next to them. So when I type it in the hashtag bar, it shows me how many posts are related to that hashtag. You know, like down here, hashtag love him. It says there are 32 million posts on this. That's a pretty heavy amount of traffic, right? You can chance it on that, but um, I would try to stay like, I'd say definitely lower than 50 million all the time. And really, I'd encourage you to stay below like 20, 20 million probably for these. And really, the target zone is like somewhere between five and 10 million. Um, I know that can be tricky, though. So again, this none of this is an exact science. And then you're going to layer in, you know, the next 100,000 uh, hashtags that has somewhere between 100 and 500 or 600,000, a couple that are in the, you know, somewhere between five and 20,000. Again, not an exact science. And then a few specialized ones. The key here, guys, is we don't want to have, we don't want to get stuck in routines where we start posting like a robot or like a bot rather. So the idea is that if I did three posts in a row that had hashtag at the Bradley in each one and hashtag foodie and hashtag great wine, I might end up getting what's called shadow banned which is where Instagram, remember, algorithms run these sites. They're mathematical computer equations that run them. They're not humans. So they're following basically an equation and they're looking for things like bot-like posting. So if they see a hashtag being just reused on every post, they might think or identify your posts as being more or less the equivalent of spam, uh, not well thought out, not creative, not contributing to the platform's you know, value to people. So having these blocks can enable you to switch between groupings of hashtags every four to five posts that you do and kind of take off some of that mental burden. You don't have to follow this again at all like an exact science. You can, for one hashtag block, you can delete five of the hashtags and add five random ones. But this is just a, a little trick that'll take you, you know, say an hour to create and then save you probably tens of hours moving forward over throughout, you know, throughout the course of a year. So once you've developed your hashtag blocks, I would also encourage you, like, if you're a really heavy marketer, someone who's doing this with regular frequency, every, like, maybe every month or two, switch up your blocks. At least give them some tweaks. You can carry over some of the words, you know, but give them a couple tweaks so that there is kind of a freshness happening in there. Okay, how to grow your following. You'll see that nice picture of Gary Vee there. So some of you probably already know where part of this is going. Gary Vee's 180 strategy. Now this one is a little bit intensive. We're talking about it taking, if you do this daily, um, my guess is it's gonna take you a minimum of probably 30 minutes. Uh, could take you up to an hour, but this, it works. It is very much a functional uh, strategy to get your followership up on your Instagram. So Gary Vee's 180 strategy is leave your two cents on, sorry, it just says in there, but on the top nine trending Instagram posts for 10 different hashtags relative to your brand. I put frequently, he says daily. Let me break this down for you what this means. So I'm going to go into Instagram and I'm going to look for uh, hashtags that appear to be trending in my field. 
I'm going to use real estate again for this. So I could do hashtag, you know, realtor. It's doing really well. It's trending. I can uh, then <clears throat> do hashtag, um, you know, I could do hashtag like buyers, hashtag sellers, things like that, that are all going to be trending under the topic of real estate and or the account of real estate. Say, for example, there's an account that I love uh, that's really trending. It's a, it's a realtor out of New York. So then I can go under his hashtags, click those hashtags that are trending, and then I can leave my own little two cents in there. Like say, you know, I personally think this is a great strategy or I love the way this works or great post. I really needed to see this today or whatever. And the idea basically is that these numbers add up to 180. But the idea is you're, this is a, an equation that's putting you out there and engaging and commenting and interacting. And Instagram, and, and for that matter, Facebook, but Instagram especially, is huge on this concept of engaging. This is what's going to get you somewhere. People will interact with you when you interact with them. You know, just doing a follow isn't really going to get you that far. You'll get some follow backs, but you'll also get a lot of people who don't follow you back. But if you can add uh, content to people that are already trending, to hashtags that are already trending, you know, not only are you exposing yourself to people that follow those topics, but you're also connecting with these influencers um, and you're really broadening your reach. So this is just a little exercise. You can do it once a day. You can do it uh, once a week. You can tweak it to work best for you. But the idea is every day to be out there commenting on um yeah, somebody said the 180 strategy works. Yes, it works so well. Um, if the okay, got a question in here. What if the trending hashtags are nationwide or worldwide, and your audience is mostly local? Um, I mean, I would just say then make sure that you tag your location in the photo because Instagram's algorithm is going to be more likely to push it to local uh, folks. So like. You know, if you're sitting in Tri-Cities and you're using a hashtag that's nationwide or worldwide, make sure you tag yourself in Pasco, Richmond, or Kenwick or at the business that you're sitting at, the coffee shop or wherever. And then I, and it wouldn't hurt to throw in like a hashtag, you know, Richland, Washington. Um, you know, there's also the, like hashtags like, you know, love to try and things like that that you could add in there. But I would still use them because you, regardless, you want you know, you want that large following still, even if they are worldwide. If someone from California wants to follow you, it's not going to hurt you. It's just going to drive up your ranks in the, in the kind of like the social stratosphere that is Instagram. Okay. When you follow people, now this one, I'm going to preface, you have to be the right person for this. <laughs> if you're not careful, it could come across creepy, I'm sure. But when you follow people, don't just follow Try sending them a message. Send them a message that has a compliment in it on their photo feed or something about their profile. Try to be specific. Try to be specific and try to be sincere. Like find a photo real quick that you actually really like, or a quote they posted, or or a video they did, or whatever, and send them a sincere message about it. If you are a charismatic enough person and can get away with it, send them a voice message. That really stands out. People will be like who the heck is this person that's sending me a voice message, right? It's not something most people see in their inbox and it really give you kind of a jump on, on standing out. Just make sure you have something to say so you're not in an awkward space or seeming creepy or, or whatever, right? Collabs and shout outs, this is huge. I encourage people, go live with people around you. Your friends might think it's weird, but as long as, or your business associates or whatever, they might be a little uncomfortable, but as long as you take the lead, like. It just gives you instant content. It gives you more reach because you get to tag them in the post. People see that they're going live with you, so on and so forth. Um, going live in people's businesses, <clears throat> talking about their coffees or their food, things like that. Giving shout outs where you tag brands, influencers, businesses, whatever. Even like simple stuff like you love your new Nike shoes, right? Give Nike a shout out. When you say you love your Nike shoes, make sure that you do the at Nike symbol on there because you get exposed to all these new people that are following and, and you don't know which ones of those people are going to fall into the categories that you work with. So it's not your job to like pre-identify them. It's just your job to be seen. 
basically in this cat in this in this kind of sense. You can always use contests or giveaways. Definitely make sure you know that and, and have read Instagram's rules surrounding those things, and make sure that the uh, the giveaway matches the contest, right? So, for example, if I'm going to give you know one free beer, say at the Bradley for someone, I can't ask them to like and follow and tag and do something else. But if I'm giving away a fifty dollar gift card. I can get away with that. And we've done these and these really do work every time we've ever done them for any page that I've helped admin, we end up, you know, gaining 60, 70, 80 followers the first day we do it. Obviously also another key here is the thing you're giving away people actually have to want. So make sure that, you know, it is a, a something that has a bit of demand behind it. All right, we're going to speed things up a little bit here. So trending on Instagram right now, video content is everything. It's huge this year. It was huge last year. We're projecting it's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. Video is kind of taking over, specifically short form video, a la TikTok and Reels. Now, I know for a lot of you, that's a groaner, myself included, because, you know, I don't have TikTok. I got on it once and was like, oh, my God, I'm way too old for this and got right off of it. Um, but we're still going to talk a little bit about that and how to navigate that realm. Video stories. Those are big trending things on Instagram moving into 2021. Going live on Instagram, that's a big one still. It was a big one last year when they kind of really started debuting it in full force, and they are still really dedicated to it. It performs very well when you do it. IGTV videos and vlogs. Now, Instagram is having a little bit of a rough time competing with YouTube on this, and that's okay, but it doesn't mean that this isn't something you want to maybe foray into. If you're already making vlog videos or doing YouTubes ever, load them up into IGTV. Instagram wants to compete with YouTube, so they're gonna, you know, give you a little bit of a boost when you do something like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they will be able to in the long run, but it's there. When you're doing ads uh, on Instagram, video ads perform super well. We'll talk a little bit about uh, more about that later. Video messages inside of any of the messengers are always good. On assorted content, stories are kind of the king of Instagram right now. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Reels, TikToks, GIFs, and tweets. You Right now, presently, you can still kind of reshare all these things on Instagram, and they get pretty good traction behind them. No edit edits. This is the thing I talked about earlier. There is a growing demand and interest in things that, you know, look authentic and real. And the name in, that they've given this is the no edit edit, where you edit something, but not enough to look super edited, right? So the idea is giving it that kind of unpolished look, making it feel more real, making it feel more authentic. Uh, we talked about this a minute ago, but micro and nano influencers are huge right now. They're huge. So micro and nano are people that are less than 100,000 or less than 25,000 on the nano influencer side. So these, these people are driving a ton of traffic and business throughout the Instagram platforms. And then partnerships, you can always do paid partnerships with larger, um, you know, larger groups. Carousel posts are doing really well. Um, so anything with the photos that you, where people can scroll through a handful of photos, those are performing very, very well. In fact, the numbers of uh, just any post being a carousel post have skyrocketed in the last year and are continuing to. So, you know, it used to be a time where make, people were a little unsure of whether to do that or not, because unsure, you know, people see the first photo. Are they going to flip to the second, third and fourth? It turns out in large numbers. Yes, people do. And then branded AR. This is branded augmented reality. I'm sure all of you have seen this now. It started with Snapchat and then has moved its way into each different field where you can, you know, uh, be in your own little Tresemme commercial or whatever on one of these stories or lines and whatnot. So branded AR has had over a half a billion uses uh, just this year. Actually, almost it has, it's had a billion. And then in-app in shopping has grown a bunch as well. And I see a question here that I'll get to in a minute. Okay. 
So one out of five of every Instagram stories results in a direct message. And that is what you want. When the algorithm sees those direct messages happening, Instagram automatically assigns that something valuable is being contributed by you. And it starts giving you an overall, like let's call it a clout score. And it's a wonderful thing for your page. It's a wonderful, th wonderful thing for your post. It's also a wonderful opportunity to build relationship with people. Um, you know, at least social media is such a weird thing, but at least with them feeling that they know you because they've sent you a message now. So it kind of like a barrier has been crossed as it were. All right, stories. So we've got <laughs> over here, uh, videos. Using the videos and stories is, is really performing well. So I highly encourage you to do this, specifically using selfie style ones, you know, little real conversations. They do, these do not have to be overthought. In fact, uh, the less you think about it in terms of like trying to make everything perfect, it seems the better the video performs, as long as you know what you're there to talk about. That's the only thing that you kind of have to have worked out. It's like, why are you about to go live? What are you going to share? What are you going to talk about? You don't have to have it all planned out or mapped out, but you do need to know what your goal is in this. You know, why are you going to do this video? What's the end uh, goal of the whole thing? And then just go for it. And it turns out that um, you'll see some stats on this, but the more like authentic it looks, then the better it performs. So just turning the camera around, going straight to yourself is kind of the ideal way to do it. Uh, make sure to use all your stickers and all your fun little options. Uh, you know, when you're doing these stories, give people the option to say they like what you're doing or they don't like what you're doing or they like your hair that way or don't or whatever. Um, use your hashtags and stories uh, when you can. You don't have to do all of these in one, but make sure you're doing them often in stories. Uh, feel free to use ask question things. People like these, like ask me a question about anything where brands, brands can do it, humans can do it. You can say like, what was your favorite show this year, something simple, or you can ask something more targeted, like, you know, what is your favorite product that out of these different product lines we do or, or whatever. Um, okay. One here. Okay. So question was asked, it said, how do you add links in your stories? If you look at the top, you'll see like a little link chain button and you should be able to add it in inside there. It's on the top, like towards the middle, but on the left-hand side of the options quite often. All right. Partnerships and influencers collaborate. Again, I highly encourage you to do this. If you're trying to build your brand on Instagram, collaborate with other brands, cross promote when possible, make it a feature if you can. So what does that mean? What that means is for example, um, you know, I'm going to use my, one of my spots again, the Bradley, we collaborate with Longship a lot. So Longship wine will release a new vintage and they will share that Bradley has it and they'll tag us and they'll take, you'll, they'll use a picture of their long ship wine sitting inside of the Bradley, the restaurant, you know, uh, when the Bradley does it, they'll use a picture of the bottle inside of long ship space and tag long ship and talk about how much they love the wine. And so as you can see right there, you know, long ship is therefore getting access to all of the Bradley's followers since they're tagged since there's a nice review of their product in there and the Bradley's getting access to all of Longship's followers the same way. So you can do that with all sorts of things. You can do, you know, um, you could do like a, a thing where when people stop by your office and get a quote, you give them, uh, you know, a cool PDF from this other business that helps them with, you know, a problem that your clients often face, you know, things like that. Collaborate with clients. This is another big one. Like try to build relationships with your clients where you can use their posts about you, where they, where they do tag you in things, encourage them to tag you in things, tell them how much you like it when they do that. Like you can just say, Hey, you know what we love? We love more than anything when people love what we do enough to, you know, mention us in social media and talk about their experience with us. You can give discounts for that. You can, you know, ask people directly for it, whatever you want to do, but that's free advertising for you. And it's advertising that has great return. Same with causes. Like you can pick a cause or two that your company or your brand wants to support and then do a lot of collaboration with them where you're doing posts together and all that. And that's always great using photos, stopping by their office to check in on them, snapping stuff while you're there. 
uh, influencers and partnerships, um, connecting with connecting or partnering with people that have local influence. Those of you who are familiar with Instagram will know you can go over the search options and you can see like what are the top uh, trending posts in Pasco, in you know Kennewick, in these areas. You can type in the hashtag and then go over to places and look at it, um, you know, and see that. So you can identify like what was the you know the top four posts related to Kennewick this week and then see who posted that and then check out their social media and see some of these people, there's actually some folks here in town who have, you know, 10, 20,000 followers. So, sorry, I'm reading a question. Okay, so, you know, going, sending direct messages to those people, if you have a product that they can try, you know, offering to send them a little free thing, nothing too expensive, they're obviously, you know, it's just a local person here, but if there's something you can do, um, you know, inviting them to stop by and, and, you know, have a curate experience at your business with you leading the way, all sorts of different things like that. But if you can establish connections with them and, and have them do some shout outs for you, that's always helpful. You could offer to pay them if they're uh, affluent enough. And then, yeah, that's the next part is connecting with nano and micro influencers and having maybe doing a quick paid partnership run with them where they're promoting your band or your brand for a, you know, a fee or because you're, you send them some things every now and then or whatever. Okay, Reels and TikTok. I've, I'm gonna address this question real quick. Have I heard that Facebook and IG now, IG now downgrade you if you ask people to like, follow, comment, or share? True. I mean, this varies, but yeah, more or less. Um, it's true. However, in contests, I think you can get away with quite a bit of that, like you could say, like have someone follow and tag a friend in, you know, and, and that might do pretty well still. Like that's what we've seen at least. Um, but I do think you want to be careful about using all those words together. Um, yeah. So see in contest, it's now a violation of Facebook rules to tell people to tag people. Yeah. So you got to keep up on the rules on this stuff. Um, like I said before, you got to read the rules always before you do it. So you don't, you know, make people upset because they did the thing and now your post is pulled or, you know, hidden or whatever. So make sure you're up on those. But yeah, I would be careful about using all the words, but it's not bad enough that you can't use them at all ever. You can still get away with it a little bit. Okay. On TikTok and Reels, this is building trust through short form entertainment. Now, the key here is a lot of businesses uh, don't understand this these platforms yet. And the key is not to provide a bunch of informational content. The key is to provide entertaining content. That is literally the point of these platforms. It's all about the entertainment value. It's fine if you give away a little something, but it's all about that entertainment. And in being entertained and watching your 20 second video, um, you know, people start to feel that they have a relationship of trust being developed with you. So, uh, there's some examples we'll show you of that as we move forward here. Okay, get on trends for TikTok watchers. You can just see what's trending on TikTok. For reels, it's a little more difficult. There's an account. It's an official Instagram account called at creators. You can go to the at creators uh, tag or username on Instagram. You can follow that and you can go check on it and you can get up on the latest trends on reels on Instagram and you can try and follow along with those. Um, Key here, don't reinvent the wheel, copy good content. So you'll see on the far hand, right hand side, there's these little word videos. And this one I think says a word from a therapist, you are enough, you are lovable, right? That's a really simple video, but that's all these things are. They're just little clips offering just a little encouragement or a little fun or you know a little bright spot. In some cases, a little tip or trick you know, for something cool. Um, you don't need to break your mind trying to invent all this unique and creative content. The reason these platforms, TikTok originally and now Reels have taken off is because they kind of give you a roadmap. Here's how to do it. Make this, you know, and you can just kind of copy it and roll with it. One video a week is actually good. A lot of people have asked this question. Um, I'll get to Clubhouse briefly. A lot of people have asked this question and I'm telling you, one time a week is going to be fine. Two to three seems to be ideal. 
Okay, remake, you can use the same video, just upload it from your phone if possible. Instagram has been slowing videos that have TikTok's branding on them. So just resharing a TikTok direct, it still works okay right now, but because they've started occasionally slowing them, we are thinking they might eventually really slow them. Brands and businesses are behind on these trends, so lots of room for dominance. Again, I encourage you to go check out the app creator site and roll from there. TikTok or Reels, jury's still out on that. Reels is doing pretty well, a lot better than IGTV and competing with YouTube. And then the shopping and swipe ups are being really worked on hard and they're gonna roll out in big ways. All right, so we only have a couple minutes left, so I'm gonna accelerate this a little bit. And I'm gonna talk about Facebook ads briefly. So Facebook has been on the decline on the business page front, okay? So don't waste a ton of time managing content on your Facebook business page. I'm gonna tell you that right now, but you do need one. It's kind of like this sign of trust or a badge of trust. You need a, you need a Facebook business page. You need to have it connected so if people are messaging you, you're getting back to them. But this is not an important place to go build a ton of like post-oriented content. You need a business page in order to run ads on Facebook and ads on Facebook are still performing very well. So if you wanna run ads, you need your business page. It's important. You want people that go over to it to see a professional looking page. But again, you don't need a bunch of interesting content. You don't need thousands and thousands of followers on your page. Let's not worry about that too much. Messenger is huge. Send messengers, send messages to clients whenever you can. Um, it's a great way to interact. Facebook loves their messenger app. Messenger use went up like 700% this year. So I'd encourage you to, to take advantage of that as much as possible. Okay, standard ads on Facebook. Carousel of images works well. Videos work amazing. Great images still do pretty well. And gifts actually have done pretty well as well. You make your own gift, find one that's license free that you can use. Um, story ads, half a billion stories are viewed a day. Stories have a 24 hour lifespan, five second runtime for pictures, 20 second for video. And then they can do a swipe up feature that takes them to a landing page. So story ads are amazing. The key here is don't over polish. They have 63% higher conversion for 20% lower cost when they do a selfie style story versus if they did a more you know, manicured polished one. Again, we're gonna move fast through these so we can finish up and get to the trends real quick. These are the different types of ads you can do. The key here, real simple. First one, you wanna, the first ad you run, you wanna identify a problem. The second one, you want to retarget people who engaged with that ad <clears throat> with a special offer. So the first one, identify a problem, offer a solve for it, offer something for free, a download, you know, teeth cleaning, a tip, whatever, a little value that's given away for free. Second one, you're going to come in with an offer. It's not necessarily half, it doesn't have to be free, but it could be like one free teeth cleaning or, you know, half off teeth cleaning or whatever. And you're retargeting those first folks. Your third ad is almost always gonna be an objections overcome ad. So you're gonna overcome objections that you think people might have. Why have they not already bought in? You know, they're, this is their third time engaging with you. They obviously have some degree of interest. Maybe there's something holding them back. So either doing an overcoming objections ad or uh, doing a great review ad that shows people love your service would be a good one. And that's how you capture people on those. And then for writing great copy, I'll leave that up for one second so that when you watch the recording, you can see that and we're gonna skip past this. Using emojis, keeping it all simple, starting with a question, that's kind of the important run there. Okay, basically we're gonna go two points on here and move on, sorry, let me go back. The two points we'll touch on, video marketing reigns supreme. Everything's video right now. Any video you do is gonna get rewarded more than anything else you're gonna do. So videos are huge. 76% of users said reviews influence their purchase or buy-in on social media. So sharing reviews, having reviews, big deal. Make sure you do that. UCG stands for user, gener user content that's uh, been generated by the user. So it's actually UGC, user generated content. It, it uh, costs 50% less when you use content that you have generated for a, a click or an impression or any of that kind of stuff than like an ad that's just running that's a static ad that's not, you know, doesn't have that real authentic you feel. Okay, Clubhouse. 
Someone asked where that fits in the mix. We're going to get to that right now. Clubhouse is a drop-in audio social platform that allows moderators to add moderators uh, into their own group and have a live unrecorded conversation with handful of people or tens of thousands of people listening uh, kind of in the group. So they call it a stage. And if I start a room, I could add three other moderators or 10 or 20 or whatever, bring them up onto the quote unquote stage with me. Um, and then we can run a conversation for, you know, 5,000 people or 20 people or whatever about a topic or brainstorm or, you know, kind of whatever, a networking group. Um, it's still in beta. So they're still working kinks out for it. Um, it'll start running an algorithm rel relatively soon. And when that happens, it'll be interesting to see the shift on it. Um, it'll probably get a lot more curated, more ad driven. Uh, right now, there is a handful of problems on Clubhouse that have been identified. For example, when you add a moderator to your page, for some reason, they still have all the same privileges that you have and can actually boot you from your own room. So, um, Yes, Clubhouse is iPhone exclusive for the time, unless they've updated it since I got, you know, back in town last week. I don't think they have. It's still, I, I believe it's still iPhone exclusive. Clubhouse right now, the benefit in using it is it gives you national reach and a pretty big one. Uh, you identify the topics you're interested in once you have an invite, and then you go out and, you know, join rooms with like-minded or like-branded folks, and you can really, you know, have some crazy, awesome learning sessions, some brainstorming sessions. You can listen in on people who you'd never otherwise get to listen in on. Um, and that's about it. Instagram is competing with them with this new thing called Live Rooms. Uh, this is the last thing we'll touch on that I think is a huge deal for the year. I encourage you all to use this and get familiar with it. I put in the instructions here how to do this. So hang out, with live, hang out live with up to three people in Live Rooms. During a live chat, viewers can buy badges to show support. To start a live room, you're just going to open your account, swipe left, tap the camera option, add a title, tap the room icon, and you're going to, you can add guests from there, or you can add them as they come in if you want to. This is actually an attempt from Instagram to do a visual comp, like compete with Clubhouse. And I think it's going to go very well. It kind of will have a talk show podcast kind of feel to it if you want it to, or you can talk with a client who you love or something like that. A screenshot for you here. These are all helpful folks to follow. And we're, we're wrapping up with this, guys. Um, all helpful folks to follow if you want to up your social media game. All these people put out great informational posts up to date, uh, letting you know about changes that are happening, giving you ideas, breaking down simple five-minute, 10-minute, 20-minute tutorials on how to run all sorts of marketing, content creation, and all that good stuff. Just another one I'll leave up for two seconds so you can snap a screenshot of it, if you want content creation, here's some little suggestions for you to come up with content, easy ways to do it. So that's all on that. Basically, the summary for the whole day, guys, is, is real simple. Everything is moving forward to being as uh, video oriented, you know, as possible. And that's the direction it's going. So go all in on videos, whatever you're doing, lives, stories, uh, reels, TikToks, whatever, all in on videos. And then also really pay attention to doing at least in between your curated, curated and polished content, putting out some very authentic and genuine uh, content that has that raw feel to it, that has that, uh, you know, that real personal, we're getting a glimpse behind the facade of social media kind of vibe. And that's what's going to just, you know, it's going to do really well for you if you do that content this year between those two things.